Nearly 34 years ago, a 14-year-old girl would vanish after leaving a party. And to this very day, they still wonder what happened to Melanie. Hello, true crimers. This is a true crime in a short amount of time. And this is the case of Melanie Melanson. Viewer discretion is advised. Melanie Jo Melanson was born on November 1st, 1974, and she lived in Woburn, Massachusetts with her family. She was one of two kids. She also had a younger brother. Now, at the time uh, that this story takes place, Melanie is actually living with her grandmother um, for reasons I'm not 100% sure why, but she was still in daily contact with her actual parents as well. A few months prior to this, Melanie had finished her middle school years and had just started um, her freshman year in September of 1989. She was very excited to be a freshman. She was really happy for um, a new school, new kids to be around, but she also still had her typical group of friends. On October 27th, 1989, Melanie was attending Woburn High School, and by all accounts, the day went as normal as any other day of her, you know, young high school career. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, and there wasn't any issues that came up, no fights with anyone. And then after school, she would walk back home to her grandma's house. And then she told her grandma, hey, I'm going to be going over to my friend's house, who I guess lived just a couple houses down. And is it OK if I spend the night? The grandma said, yeah, that's fine. But Melanie, being a 14 year old girl, pretty typical, uh, had lied. Uh, she was not, in fact, going to be spending the night at her friend's house. She was actually going to a party. Uh, and to make matters worse, the party wasn't going to be at, like, a person's house that someone could, like, trace back to. Uh, the party was going to be on the outskirts of Woburn, and it was going to be in this, like, foresty, or they described it as a heavily wooded area. The party was going to be behind, like, this big industrial area, I guess, with, like, warehouses or office buildings or something like that. According to witnesses who attended the party with Melanie, there were probably... 12 to 15 or so other students there and Melanie was actually one of if not the youngest person there. The party uh, supposedly ended sometime around 10 30 p.m or at the very least that's around the time when most of the kids began to leave. According to witnesses um, there were three people left by the end of all of this one of them being 14 year old Melanie and the other two were two fellow high school boys. So according to everyone, those two boys were the last people to actually see Melanie because Melanie never came home the following morning when she was expected to, you know, by her grandma, who still assumed she had spent the night at a friend's house. When the grandma woke up and she noticed that Melanie still wasn't home, she waited a little bit. Maybe Melanie was sleeping in but she still never came home. So the grandma called the parents, called uh, the friend's house where she said she was going to be. She then started to call other friends when she found out that basically that was a lie that Melanie wasn't at the friend's house to begin with. So she began to call other friends and some of these friends had actually been at the party the night before and told the grandma, okay, Melanie was there last night. None of those calls led to the answer as to where the hell is Melanie, um, because they all had left the party. I believe they spoke to those two boys, but they also don't know. They, they claim they also don't know what happened to Melanie. So basically, they went to police to report uh, Melanie missing. When police got this information, um, Melanie had previously tried to run away. This was something that was, I guess, documented with police. So when they found out that Melanie was missing this time, they kind of naturally assumed, well, she probably just tried to run away again, and I'm sure she'll be home soon. The family told police that this time was different because Melanie's 15th birthday was only a couple of days later and she was like super pumped about it. She also had made plans with her dad to go shopping the day after she had disappeared, something she was also really excited about. 
They also had an appointment to get her braces removed, which she had had on for quite some time. And she was really excited to finally get those things off. So with that, and then partnered with her being missing now for a few days, police are like, okay, we probably think foul play was involved here. So the search for Melanie pretty much began and it was a very strong search. It was a lot of people involved. They brought in, also brought in cadaver dogs, uh, just you know, regular scent dogs. They, brought, they used uh, helicopters to search by air. They had a massive amount of people searching by foot. Uh, in this this wooded area where the party took place is where they first kind of centered their their search um, and it was a pretty densely wooded area um, a lot of trees a lot of places to hide a body if that's exactly what happened and so they searched of, under every bush under every rock and stick and log they searched high and low all over that area and we're talking at this point they they branched out like miles around where this party took place and they just they came up with absolutely nothing fast forwarding to 1992 police got a a tip which was an anonymous person calling uh, who stated that you guys should search a pond that was near where the party took place so they brought in divers um, and equipment to search the pond where they were said to look but nothing they found no human remains they found no belongings belonging to melanie they found nothing it was a dead end so they don't know if that caller was just pranking them or if they really did know something but they never called back and then her case went cold they got virtually no more tips they got no more leads as far as i know they questioned both of those boys um, repeatedly who were allegedly the last people to see melanie and they, they came up with nothing from those interviews. They didn't, I guess, didn't believe they had anything to do with her disappearance, but they also really couldn't say, well, they didn't, but they didn't even know where Melanie was. And that's kind of the first big thing is where is she and what happened to her? It wouldn't be until 2009 when a cold case team basically reopened this investigation. They were getting a lot of pressure from the community because this is one of those cases that should have been solved she should have been found and she wasn't and it wasn't solved and so there was just a lot of pressure uh deservedly so put on the police so when they publicly reopened the case you know they put out all the information back out onto the news and, and they were hoping that they could get some witnesses or someone to come forward with some information so they got another anonymous tip so kind of nearby where this party was held in the woods there is a the general foods plant um pretty close by in close proximity and so they got a tip another anonymous one to search an area specifically by this plant to find melanie's remains so they brought in excavation equipment and they brought in a whole bunch of people to start digging. They searched for quite some time and again, they found nothing, no bones, no clothing, nothing at all. Between 2011 and 2015, they would branch out from that area. They would keep expanding with excavators and continually dig and dig one of those searches they said they found something like they described it as elements of human decomposition i'm not entirely sure what that means but they weren't able to take those elements um, and actually say for certain that it belonged to a particular person in 2015 they got another tip about searching uh, a backyard uh, whose backyard i'm not sure and for the longest time there were people living in the house and they couldn't get a warrant to search the backyard uh, because they didn't have probable cause to do so but finally in 2015 the house became vacant and so they were able to get a basic search warrant now at this point before anyone else occupied the home they searched the backyard and found nothing and quite frankly that's what this entire case has always been just a lot of nothing a lot of dead ends a lot of no leads no tips nothing substantial anyway nothing that's ever led to anything of any importance 
You know, I know they've interviewed hundreds of people. They interviewed every single person from that party. They interviewed friends at school. They interviewed her family members. And they've got, it's just a lot of nothing. And that's so bizarre that this 14 year old girl could attend a party with over a dozen people. She was reportedly last seen with two boys and then she's gone. And that's it, she's gone and there's nothing. At the time of Melanie Melanson going missing, she again was 14 years old. She was five foot three, weighed approximately 105 pounds. She had blonde hair and blue eyes and she had braces at the time. She had both of her ears pierced um, and she had earrings on the night of her disappearance. She is or was considered an endangered missing person. So again, police do 100% believe that foul play was involved and the likelihood that Melanie is alive still is probably extremely slim. And it's believed that she was probably killed that night. Was it by someone at the party? They don't know. Was it by a complete stranger as she walked because she had to walk across this like big like field slash with like wooded area kind of thing to get to back to her grandma's house so there's always a possibility there could have been a stranger lurking in the woods could have been a vagrant you know it could have been any it could have been anyone uh, it could have been someone who followed her to the party and was just spying on her there's so many possibilities and so many different things could have happened. And that's unfortunately where it ends. If by some miracle Melanie was still alive today, she would be about 48 years old. This is the most recent age progression photo they've made, but this was done quite some time ago. But she may still look something very similar to this. But like I always say in these disappearances or unsolved cases, someone somewhere out there knows the truth. Someone knows what happened to 14-year-old Melanie Melanson. And perhaps that someone is you. If you have any information about the disappearance of Melanie Melanson, please contact the Woburn, Massachusetts Police Department. And you can do so at 781-933-1212. And you can always report your information anonymously. Someone is out there who can help Melanie's family finally bring Melanie home. But that is it for this case, True Crime Maroonies. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you have tripped, fallen, and stumbled your way into this video, hello, I'm Mike. I tell true crime stories here and over on the TikTok. So please feel free to subscribe to me here. Follow me over on TikTok if you want to. The uh, link to that is in the link tree in the description of this video below. Uh, next, if you have a case you want me to cover, please email me. The email is listed below. Just email me the name of the person, where it happened, when it happened, and I'll add it to my list. Next, if you want to support me in any way, we do sell merch, t-shirts, hoodies, a wine glass, stuff like that. We do ship internationally, yay. Uh, so that's also linked in the link tree below. And then lastly, if you have a Discord account and you feel like joining my Discord server, it's a very quiet, very chill server, um, but you can also join it. It's linked below, but be over the age of 18 or else you will be kicked out of there. So yeah. But that is it for this video. True crime, a rony dony dingleberry dongs. That's gross again. Molly, what do you want to say? What do you want to say? You've been crying this whole dang time in the background, hip hopping, jumping around like a crazy lunatic to get on camera. Now, what do you want to say? Say your words, say your piece, say what you want to say. You're being rude. You're being very, you're being very quiet. You're being very rude. They're waiting for something from you. You're just sticking your tongue out at them. That's, that's, that's messed up. Why are you doing that? Girl, you a bitch.